And let's pray for the word. I love it, Father, in the name of Jesus. We know you never gather your people in vain. Wherever two or three gather in your name, in their midst. And where you are, dear Father, there's liberty. Lord God, we want to commit your word to you this morning. I pray that you're going to use me as a vessel of this hour. This is that your father, when you are risen, Jehovah Father. What a good news that we can listen to this morning. That you are risen, Jehovah, and you never die again. You never taste the grave again. You never taste the cross again. You did it once and for all. And this gives us joy that we can look unto you because we know in you we have our whole being. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The empty promises of Easter. And our guiding scripture is from the book of Luke 24, verse 1 to 12. Luke 24, verse 1 to 12. The Bible says, Now, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told th these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen clothes lying by themselves, and he departed, marveling, to himself at what had happened. Yeah, that is the story of what happened that Sunday like today when Jesus was crucified. And the beauty is he had foretold his uh, disciples what will happen after three days. That he will, he will die, he'll be crucified, die, buried, but after three days he's going to rise. And this morning we are talking about a Christ who has risen and who has conquered the grave, who has conquered the, the, the cross, and who has conquered death. And I know this morning I'm talking to people who are hurting from broken promises. Somebody promised you something, it never materialized. I want to speak to a heart this morning that there is one who promises and fulfills. And that's how in this house, the doctor said, your brother, your father, your daughter, your mother, we live. But down the line, this person passed on. That doctor broke the promise. But I want to encourage you this morning that we serve a God who hears and acts on our behalf. This morning, I want to speak to somebody that you raised money for your child to go to school with a promise that this child, when he, come, he comes back, he'll be a star, he'll be a, a, a legacy in the family, but never came to be. Those are promises, promised by people, by Jesus because he's not a man to lie or a son of God to repent. He promised the disciples that after three days, I will rise. And today we are celebrating 2,000 back, the, 2000 back that Jesus rose from the dead. That means we will live because he promised, and it came to pass. I want to talk about three things. I want to talk about the empty cross. The empty cross means the forgiveness of sin. I also talk about the empty tomb. The empty tomb talks about the eternal life. And finally, I'll talk about the empty burial clothes. What does that mean? This personal relationship 
with Jesus. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Our God is a God of promises and whatever he promises is he come to it comes to pass because nobody can fulfill what he promised. Bwana pewe siva. God never made promises that was too good to be true. No. The truth of the matter is the world is from full of empty promises. His, he, his promises became empty because they were fulfilled. The cross was empty. The tomb was empty. And the clothes that Jesus Christ was wearing when he, he, ro he rose from the, 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 the grave, he left behind the clothes. Just like Bartimaeus. When Bartimaeus called upon Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon. The Bible says that when Bartimaeus, when Jesus heard his voice, he said, tell him to come. What happened? Bartimaeus left the clock behind. The same case applies to us. Jesus did not rise with the burial clothes because they could have hold home. But he said he did one thing. He left behind the burial clothes. When Jesus went to resurrect his friend Lazarus, he said, untie him. Because he already was tied with the burial clothes. He said, untie him. This morning the Lord is saying he's ready to untie you. It doesn't matter the kind of clothes they have tied you with, the kind of reputation, the kind of names they are calling you is ready to untie you. God is different. Instead of promises full of emptiness on Easter, he gave us emptiness that is full of promise. There were so many promises, but for Jesus, he gave us the fullness of the emptiness this day, the Easter day, the Easter Sunday. Some of us this morning, as I said, are nursing the effects of wounds. And I want you to learn from Jesus that after rising, because today we are saying he's risen, after rising, he, he hold nobody, he, he hold a grudge for nobody, because he knew. It is not about him, it is about you and me. And if he made it, we can also make it. In the book of John, chapter number 14, John 14, verse 16 and 17, Jesus said, I will pray the Father and I will give you another helper. Remember, this was before he left the earth. Then he went back to heaven and he told him to turn in Jerusalem for the power of the Holy Spirit. He said, this, I will pray. He didn't say you pray. He said, I will pray. And you know the connection between a father and a son. He said, I will pray the father and he'll give you another helper. Just as he was a helper to the, to, to the 12 disciples, just as he was a helper to all people that came with, to his crusades, he said to give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. For him, he was not in Nairobi and in Moranga. He was only in one particular place at one particular time. But he knew this, that this helper will abide with you forever. Verse 17. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Not only dwelling with you but also being aware in you. Those are two powerful words. That he dwells with you. He dwells with all of us in this place. But he also dwells in you. For him to dwell in you, you only need to confess your sins because he cannot live where there is sins. This morning the Lord was reminding me that where there is sin, there is no grace. And where there is grace, there is no sin. Two things cannot live together. Sin and grace. It is either grace or sin. It is either sin or grace. It is upon you to choose. Is it grace or sin? When you get born again, it doesn't mean that you don't sin. Yeah, you sin because you're in this carnal body. But what happens is that grace will carry you through. But you that is a sinner, you don't have a helper. But for those who are born again, Jesus knew that the helper will come. When the helper lives in you, now what manifests it is his grace upon your life. And you're not supposed to be defeated. You're not supposed to fight. Because we fight in victory. It has already been won. This battle has already been won. So what we do is that we fight in victory. 
This morning, I'd like to I'd like us to think about the promises of Easter. The three of them. Each promise is marked by something empty. Let's look at the empty cross. This is the cross, but it is empty. Jesus is not longer on the cross, but he lives in our hearts. The empty tomb. There's nothing in the tomb. And also the empty clothes. It is the fact that each of these are empty. This assures us that God's promises are real because he promised it came to pass. What has he promised you this morning? It seems years have gone, but the same thing he promised, believe you me, because it's him who promised it will come to pass. Because they couldn't hold Jesus. Because he couldn't be contained by the cross. The tomb or even the, his burial clothes, we can be sure of the fullness of God's promises in our lives. Number one, let's look at the, let's look at the empty cross. We begin with the empty cross. Because the cross is empty, we have the promise of forgiveness of sins. When the, em the cross was empty, Jesus removed his body. What was left there was forgiveness. So when you look at the cross of Jesus, what do you see? You don't see the body of Jesus. You see what? The forgiveness of sins. There's no question. Jesus was dead. Yes, the soldiers knew it. The Romans knew it. And the Jews knew it. But the bottom line is, Jesus is alive. He's no longer on the cross. The cross is empty. Together, they made up a lie that the disciples stole the body. Because this tomb was guarded. And they, went, they wanted to prove that they were on duty. But it is, that it is the disciples who stole the body. Can you imagine 11 fishermen overpowering a company of Roman soldiers? Only 12 disciples in the midst of so many soldiers moving a two-ton stone and stealing the body of Jesus. Can that work? It can't work. Just they, so that they could claim that they came back, that he, 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 did, he came back to life, but they were saying he didn't come back to work. To what, they, what, what, what they wanted to say that Jesus, the, the disciples came, rolled the, the stone, and stole the body. But Jesus wanted to prove them wrong. Because you cannot roll the stone and they are w w soldiers that they are guarding. They could be jobless, but they want to prove themselves that this Jesus was stolen. You see, Jesus really did die. That is why I want you to see the cross this morning. It is a place where he died. But today, it is empty. Jesus died. Just like no more death. Jesus was buried. And on top of that, they placed a stone on top of his tomb so that nobody, nobody can dare take the body. But all that was done, Jesus left an empty cross full of hope for you and me. The promise of the empty cross is that you and I stand forgiven. If you forget anything else, what happened, what will happen, is that that empty cross stands an assurance, you and me, we are forgiven. We were sinners. We were to die for our sins. But Jesus came and died and said, it is finished. Because it was in that cross that Jesus paid the penalty of our sins. We know we are sinful by nature because of where we are coming from, our first parents. But Jesus knew the best gift he can give you it is the penalty of your sins. And he said, Put it on me, and I'm going to pay. It doesn't matter how many years they have seen. Put it on me, and count it on me, because I will pay the penalty for their sins. Sin, now, there is a word that is just not popular anymore. It is a word that isn't politically correct, but the simple fact of the matter is, we all have sinned. We all have sinned, Romans said, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We serve a God who comes short of nothing, but us, we come short of his glory. 
Every one of us, you and me, and the person that's sitting next to you, behind you, and in front of you, we are all sinners. But the moment you exchange your sins with a cross, you become a saint. You're no longer a sinner, but you become a saint. But the choice is yours. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The only person who has ever lived a sinless life is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He came to see this earth from heaven. He never sinned. He lived in this earth for three and a half years and he never sinned. For, for three and a half years he was in the ministry. For 33 years he lived on this earth and he never sinned. That means even you and me, we can live without sin. Because today we have an assurance that because of the cross and the empty tomb, we have a hope in Jesus. Everyone else, you and me, we have failed. So here is a problem. According to God's law, the wages of sin is death. He says the soul that sin will surely die. Not the body. The body, kazi ya muli naishia tu hapa. The moment we put in the grave, kazi ya muli meisha. But the soul lives forever. The soul will live. The soul that sins we live, but not live in heaven. But we live where? In hell eternally. But the sin that have received Jesus Christ, we live eternally in heaven. And the choice is ours. The Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy, that are placed before you this day, life and death. And then it says, choose life that you and your generation or your descendants may live. Friends, life is a matter of choice. If you choose to live for Jesus, there's eternal life. If you choose to choose the other side, and you know the other side, there is eternal condemnation. The choice is yours. Because we have sinned, we deserve God's judgment. We deserve eternal death, and this is hell. However, when you look at that empty cross, it is a reminder of God's promise that we have been forgiven. Don't remind God what you did, how many people you have killed, how many people you have corrupted, how many people he said, I have forgiven you. Don't remind me. I said, it is finished. It doesn't matter what you did. When you come to Jesus, it is all over again. And you start in a new plate, in a clean plate because of what happened on the cross. On that cross, Jesus paid the penalty of our sins. It was on that cross that Jesus offered this perfect, sinless life of each one of us. He there was an exchange at the cross. Before that fateful Friday, God could open the books and look at and look up each name. He could see your name and my name written in black with the words guilty of sin. But Jesus went to the cross. This God literally transferred our accounts to his name. On that day, ac across every name, he wrote in Jesus' blood. Jesus' blood was the ink. He wrote, forgiven, forgiven, forgiven. That was on Friday. But today, today, Sunday, this is what he's writing, writing, forgiven, forgiven, forgiven. It doesn't matter what you did. You are forgiven. Let's go to the, the second one is the empty tomb. The empty tomb is the truth of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the promise of everyone that we too will be raised to eternal life. We Christians, we don't die. We rest. Revelation says, that write this, that from now on, those who will die, they will rest from their labor. We don't die. Jesus did it for us as we rest, waiting for the resurrection day. To those who know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, death has lost its sting. It is no longer something to be feared. What fear is there when we have the promise that one day we will live forever? with him in heaven. There is a reunion, friends. 
those who live for Christ on this earth. Doesn't matter how the earth is. Those who live for Christ on this earth, and you are born again, there is a reunion. Because this body cannot inherit the kingdom where we are going. But you are so. When you live loving the Lord, denying the, 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 the desires of this flesh, one day you will see those who went before us. The empty tomb is God's way of saying to us, relax, my child. I took the sting. Death can't hurt you anymore. There is nothing painful for us like death. For those who have lost their loved ones, there's nothing painful like death. But he said, I have overcome for you. Death can't hold you anymore. I overcame, will also overcome. Why was the tomb empty? Because Jesus was alive. The angel said, he is risen. And the promise to us is that we can live even if we die. We normally sing, uh, It is a promise. And the one who promised he showed you the way. That is no longer on the cross. He's no longer in the tomb. So even if you rest, you will live again. We go to the third one. The empty burial clothes. The empty burial clothes. We all know, and uh, as I said, maybe I've lost a loved one. Among the budget of the burial, there is the clothes. And I don't know who told us that you cannot bury this person with old clothes. And then it will be there, yo. Unam, eh? Atinini? Ni dini, eh, dini. Eh, dini, ikatu will be there, kwamba. Ata uyo mwenye amekufa, ukienda kunuria the family, the family, nguo za kufa, siku ya mazishi. The dead is among the the budget. Muna mpiga suti. Suti ya pesa mzuri. Muna mtengenezea mchua. Muna mtengenezea mchua. Suti. So even in the time of Jesus, the same happened. Dini liku wako, Jesus also had burial clothes. After the angel had spoken to the women, they immediately went back to the apostles and reported what had happened. With this incredible news, Peter, no joy to Peter, 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 the same Peter. Kimbele mbele ya Peter ni mzuri. That's why we did more about Peter in the Bible. Kwa kimbele mbele yako, at some point na kuwa mzuri. Sindi yo? Peter aka, re, uh, denied Jesus three times. Aka sa mimi si mjui. Until the third time, aka sikia kuku imefanya nini? Kuku ikawika. The same Peter said to Jesus, if it is you, tell me to come. The same Peter, na kasa kutembea wapi? Kwa ma you know, when he was walking on the water, he saw Jesus. From Moranga, but I thank God for Peter. So this morning, when the, the women to go and told, them, told the apostles what had happened. Peter kasema, mimi sisi ni kamen, I must go inside the, the tomb. Nione na macho yangu, so that I can give evidence of what I have seen, not heard. John, halika tu pale kwa mulango. But Peter went deep where Jesus was buried. And what he found is there? Not the empty tomb, he found the clothes, the burial clothes. Bwana asifiwe. 
When they got there, John stopped just outside the tomb, but Peter ran right in. Didn't take them long to discover the tomb was just the way the woman had said it was empty. But that is not all. Inside, Peter found the clothes that Jesus had been buried in. This tells us that Peter was when you go to the mortuary, when they are picking the body, after dressing the body, family members will come and do what? First, we identify the body. Then, I define, come as a woman, we are 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 a woman, Somebody told me this um, that our parents, um, Allow to just it is going to help you. That our parents, those are aged, they have no teeth. Na mama yako, baba yako anaka, uh, they cannot eat meat, they cannot eat maize because they have no teeth. But when this parent passes on, muna mweka baka meno. So this person was asking, where this parent is going, there is no eating. And because it was said in Kikuyu, I can say, "Muna mpeleka kwa shi makakule mchua, akatafuna mchua." Iyo meno, anda kutafuna mchua. Unajua mchua ni nini? Those are things that celebrate when we leave you three by six hapo chini. So this person was saying, "When your parents are alive, dress them, feed them, bizuri." Kwa sabu kuchini, aje anda kutafuna mchua. Are we together? So Peter was there when they dressed Jesus with the burial clothes. So he could identify this easy to Tunvalisha on Friday. Tunvalisha easy. So Peter was able to identify the clothes. This is my prayer this morning. Can people identify you with the clothes of salvation? When you got born again, you died. Died to this flesh. And you are clothed with the clothes of the garment of salvation. Can people identify you? Jesus was alive. If someone had, if someone had stolen his body, they wouldn't have removed the burial clothes. Because mwizi ya kwa ginasaya kuchagua mbivu na mbichi, mwizi ya nahamaga na kila kitu, akifika na kuta hile kitu ya ni pampas, but you'd be too late. So they were asking, if this body was stolen, they could have gone even with the clothes. But this person, the one who removed these clothes, had all the time, and this was our father. He, he told his son, you cannot come to heaven with the burial clothes. Leave them in the tomb. These burial clothes were left there, folded neatly, and left there. Truly, Jesus has resurrected. It wouldn't be long before Jesus would appear to Mary Magdalene and to all the apostles and eventually to over 500 people when he resurrected. When he left the cross, he left the womb, he left the clothes, he went back to heaven. But within 40 days, Jesus appeared to these people. When he came, he would sit down with them, walk with them, talk with them, and eat with them. Once again, they would be able to fellowship with the Lord. You see that the promise of the empty burial clothes, Jesus is alive and wants to fellowship with you. Think about that. The cross could not hold him. The tomb could not contain him. And the burial clothes were unnecessary. The, tomb, the cross could not hold him. The tomb could not contain him and the burial clothes were unnecessary. Because Jesus is alive, he has skin and bones and a, and a face that we can recognize that this is Jesus. The men, the, the men who are going to a mouse could not recognize Jesus. They were talking. At some point, he asked a question, what are you talking about? And one of them told him, I was thinking this is still Peter. And one of them told him, when we just care what happened. But the moment they ate the bread, they knew this was Jesus. I don't know if you know this news. But until you eat, 
the bread so that you can recognize Jesus. He talked and touched and loved and healed. He did it the day of resurrection and he does it still even today. And most importantly, he wants to do it with you. Buana sifiwe. And I want to ask you this question this morning. Do you know Jesus Christ? Not before. The one who left the cross. The one who left the womb. The one who left the burial clothes. Do you know him? You see, we can know about someone and not truly, <coughs> and not truly know them. All of us here, we know about our president. Who is our president? Does he know you? That you know him. Some of us here who are business people, even in your shop, you have his portrait because that is the law of this nation. But does he know you? Up in the distance stood the empty cross. The promise that our sins were forgiven. Not are forgiven, it is were forgiven. You're talking about past tense, 2,000 years back, our sins were forgiven. Why are you living in sins even today? Why are you carrying the burden of sins and they were forgiven 2,000 back? Bring your sins to the cross. Jesus is saying, even today, it is as fresh as it was 2,000 years back. At the end of their journey was an empty tomb, the promise of eternal life. Do you, do you have a promise of eternal life? Or you live because it is a Sunday, tomorrow will be Monday. Live with a life of expectation that when this life is over, I have another life that I'm going to live. You close your eyes on this part, you open your eyes on the other part. It all depends. You open your eyes the way you slept yesterday. If you slept yesterday, you pick a chapati. You know how you make the dark your chapati and you don't wash your hands. Somebody said, Ukilana gambut. Can you think a gambut? That's that come from Kinangob. Amarimuru. If you kilara na gambut, uta muka na stilettos. Before you say the good night, anything can happen that you don't see the following day. Inside the tomb were empty burial clothes. The promise that we would once again have a close personal relationship with Jesus Christ, our living Savior. The promises that they discovered that day, they too can have them today. They discovered even today they can be our promise. Don't wait another day. Do it today. And I know the joy of the Lord and I enjoy the joy of eternal life. And sorry, and know the joy of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you and we bless you. Thank you because we chose you whom to choose is life eternal. We thank you for the grace this morning that has carried us through this far. Now, Father, we surrender ourselves to you because we know as we continue serving you in this vineyard, as we continue declaring that we know you, you continue to give us, giving us the newness of your grace to carry us through in this life because we know we mingle shoulders with people that don't know you, Jehovah, but your grace has been sufficient. We love you this morning and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have our seats.